Now let's see the dermatomes of the upper limb bud. As we already discussed in the previous lecture that the upper limb is going to derive from the upper limb buds from the both the anterior lateral aspect of the trunk. So here this is the developing embryo. This is the purely schematic figure. To understand the limb bud development from the anterior lateral aspect of the trunk. These upper limb buds they are going to supplied by the spinal segment C5 to T1 and the spinal segment is nothing but it is the area of the spinal cord from where the pair of the spinal nerves are going to arise and there are 31 pairs of the spinal nerves are there so out of them C5, C6, C7, C8 and T1 spinal segments they are going to supply the upper limb and that's why the cutaneous supply of the upper limb that is via this ventral rami of C5 to T1 and the area of the skin supplied by the single spinal segment that is called as the dermatome. So when we talk about the axis of the upper limb birds that axis it passes from the center of the upper limb and we are going to see the anterior and posterior axis shortly but before that just try to understand the axis of the upper limb and the concerned structures. So when we see the area concerned with the thumb it is the cephalic sided area and the area of the upper limb concerned with, with the rotation of the upper limb bird 90 degree laterally this thumb it is going to persist on the lateral aspect of the upper limb while the little finger is going to remain present on the medial aspect of the upper limb and the dermatomes they are going to supply the upper limb it is from the craniocaudal direction so we can say the lateral aspect of the arm it is going to supplied by the cranial most dermatomes of the upper limb and the ulnar aspect of the arm it is going to be supplied by the lower most segment of the dermatome. So when we see the axial lines the upper limb having two axial lines one is present on the anterior side and one is present on the posterior side so anteriorly this anterior axial line it starts from this Lewis angle or we can say it is from the second costal cartilage and from there it is going to curve downward and reach up to the front of the wrist. And from the front of the wrist, this axial line, it is going to bifurcate to enclose the middle three fingers. While posteriorly, this posterior axial line, it is going to start from the C7 spine. It passes downward and take a curve at the scapular region and reach up to the elbow joint. And from the elbow joint, this posterior axial line, it is going to bifurcate to enclose the the middle three fingers like this. So when we see the dermatomes which are going to supply the upper limb that is from the cranial side to caudal side and so we can say the lateral aspect of the arm it is going to be supplied by C5 dermatome while the lateral aspect or we can say pre-axial aspect of the forearm along with the thumb it is going to be supplied by the C6 dermatome while this middle three fingers they are going to be supplied by C7 dermatome along with the area of the palmar as well as the dorsal aspect of the hand while this post axial part of the forearm along with the little finger it is going to be supplied by the C8 spinal nerve while the medial aspect of the arm it is going to be supplied by T1 spinal segment. So the dermatomal representation within the upper limb it is from the cranial to caudal side and the C7 dermatome it is the central dermatome which is going to supply the middle three fingers while the thumb is going to be supplied by C6 dermatome while the little finger via the C8 dermatome. When we see the posteriorly this area concerned with the lateral aspect of the arm it is going to be supplied by C5 dermatome while the area 
concerned with the lateral aspect of the forearm it is going to be supplied by c6 dermatome while on the back of the forearm as well as the middle three fingers they are going to be supplied by c7 dermatome which is a central dermatome while the little finger along with the medial aspect of the forearm it is going to be supplied by c8 dermatome and the medial aspect of the arm which is going to be supplied by t1 dermatome one interesting thing regarding the dermatome is there that the area above the sternal angle it is going to be supplied by c4 dermatome so the area concerned with the scapular region it is supplied by the c4 dermatome while the area below this anterior axial line which is passes from the sternal angle so the skin below the sternal angle it is going to be supplied by the t2 dermatome so we can say the sternal angle it is the line of the demarcation between the two discontinuous dermatomes one common feature regarding the dermatomes of the body is there that they are not going to supply the particular area of the skin but it is also going to be supply the adjacent dermatome so we can say the skin of the any part of the body it is mostly going to be overlapped by the adjacent dermatomes and that's why any injury to the spinal segment will never lead to the complete loss of the sensation except at some area uh, but the sensations remain present because of the overlying adjacent dermatomes this anterior axial line it is the area for the demarcation of the two discontinuous dermatomes and this is responsible for the assessment of the cutaneous paresthesia by the clinician because of the segmental origin so the clinician can assess the two segmental discontinuous dermatomes clinically while in case of the axial line along with the axial line also the two discontinuous dermatomes are present like in the arm front side of the arm we can see the c5 dermatome is there and on the medial side there is t1 the dermatome is there so clinician can investigate the two discontinuous dermatomes at near the axial line so this axial line knowledge it is very important clinically so this is all about the dermatomes of the apple hope you understand well thanks for watching